Stanley, can you give us some idea about the size of a conversion kit for a car, for instance? Uh, we see this, all this electronics sitting there, but I guess this is not going to be part of a future upgrade kit for a car, is it? No, basically what this was a pre-engineering unit in order to satisfy the U.S. Code of Operability on Section uh, 35, Section 101. And it was uh, developed uh, as pre-engineering to uh, show the operability of all the different uh, operational parameters of water fuel cell. But in actuality, the entire technology you see here is really reduced down to the water fuel cell injectors you see right here. But which this, this is the only thing that's needed for upgrading a car, or is there anything else involved? No, uh, the water fuel cell injector, which replaces the, the conventional spark plug in an, in an internal combustion engine, this is hooked up to a water tank. Uh, basically, if you have a, a plastic uh, fuel tank in your car, you simply drain out the, the gasoline, flush it out, fill it up with fresh water. Then, then uh, uh, the water fuel cell injector now allows the water to be uh, transferred. Uh, the system approach allows the water to, be, to go in to the injector, which is now being processed to release the thermal explosive energy from hydrogen. The second part that's hooked up to it is what we've referred to here again as the gas processor that's ionizing the gas to allow it to come in. So basically, in retrofit, all we're doing is simply tapping off the exhaust gases from the conventional engine. We're now using the gas processor to utilize the ambient air to ionize the gases, which is now mixing with the water, which now converts it to water fuel. We allow the water fuel to go into the, into the injector that's now uh, plugged into our uh, replaces your spark plug and allows the engine now to run off the thermal exposure engine from hydrogen. So basically, all we're doing is taking the gas, uh, gasoline out of the tank, fill it up with water. We now uh, replace the spark plug with the water fuel cell injector, and we now hook a small little miniaturized computer which controls and meter mixes the gases going in, in the engine to allow uh, the engine to uh, accelerate and deaccelerate. So the installation is a quite a very small, lightweight, uh, compact electronic uh, control system. Okay, now the distributor, is that going to be the same, can I use the same distributor or do you have a modified version or is there anything additional to it? Can you yes, explain we, about do, that? We, uh, we do modify the uh, distributor as it's shown over here. Uh, we simply take off the conventional gas, uh, gas uh, rotor cap out of a conventional engine and we put the laser distributor uh, in between the, uh, the uh, distributor assembly and the cap and this now sends the signals to the uh, computer system, which will really be a uh, composite of several IC, IC or integrated circuit chips that miniaturizes the, the hydrogen computer system. Okay. This whole hydrogen stuff, isn't it extremely explosive in the car? Is there any danger involved? What's the safety aspect of oil? No, we have actually solved the problem. Uh, there's no storage of hydrogen whatsoever. The water goes into the injector, which now allows it to go into a high pulse voltage zone which performs electrical polarization process. So the water is only converted into thermal explosive energy as it enters the injector. So the thermal explosive energy is now occurring inside the engine. So the electronic system is designed to uh, regulate and control the explosion of the energy, which now co-equals that of gasoline. So it's a tremendously fail-safe operable system. Okay, so it's safe, it's a small system. Yes. Uh, what about maintenance of the car engine itself? Uh, do I need more maintenance? Is it different? Um, is there anything? Do I have to modify anything on the maintenance schedule? No, just keep the same uh, maintenance uh, as you, you have it. Uh, since you're releasing thermal explosive energy into the engine and you're co equaling the, the burn rate of gasoline, then there's very little maintenance. Uh, if there is uh, any maintenance at all, uh, we developed the uh, technology years ago that we could really impregnate the cylinder walls. Uh, of the engine with Teflon, and we can even uh, impregnate and treat the bearings and literally run an engine off of, uh, off of the Teflon and eliminate the oil. Uh, if that occurs, then you can use a product, something like Slick 50 in the engine, uh, if you would need it. But the wear factor, since it's a very clean burning fuel, hydrogen is a very clean burning fuel, then uh, the engine uh, oil is not contaminated under the, uh, the old method of running on gasoline or diesel fuel. So it's an extremely uh, clean burning fuel. Are we on? Yeah, the red temper. Chris Stanley, what, what about the valves in the engine? The, well, pi the pistons, don't, don't the pistons burn out because there's no lubrication of the, of the lead or any, any other additives to the 
usual gas. No, the valves, you know, have been designed uh, very, very recently to operate off of uh, non-leaded gasoline. And uh, since we use the exhaust gases to cycle back in to modulate uh, the burn rate of hydrogen gas, as we uh, now control the burn rate to co-equal gasoline, then the engine temperature uh, and operations are, are duplicating the same thing on gasoline or diesel fuel. So you don't change the engine in any way. And this allows us now to retrofit the water fuel cell technology to any uh, uh, existing engine. And it's very important because it now gives us the ability uh, that we can stabilize uh, transportation as we talked about before if the energy is cut off. Okay, so now the accelerator. Can they still keep the same mechanical accelerator or do you have a new device for that as well? Yes, we developed uh, over here as we come along. We've developed the, uh, what we call a laser uh, accelerator, as you see right here, that um, simply is attached to the accelerator pedal, and it trans, uh, as you press the pedal down, the gas pedal down, it displaces the um, mechanical displacement into electrical impulses, which now is fed into the micro miniaturized uh, computer electronics. So this gives us the abilities now to control the acceleration. This type of technology uh, has given us the abilities to equal or supersede the performance of acceleration and deacceleration on conventional uh, cars that's running on gasoline or diesel fuel. So the, the hydrogen uh, being two and a half times more powerful than gasoline uh, gives us a tremendous amount of performance over the prior state of the art. It runs very smoothly and uh, uh, it, it has a very unusual sensation. Uh, generally when you're running a, a car on gasoline you have this kind of a pause, but when you're running on hydrogen the way we're doing it, it's a, it's a constant acceleration. So it's a, it's a extremely very fast responding uh, fuel source that's coming from water. So, you, so you're claiming that performance is equal or better as a normal gasoline car? Oh yes, definitely. It'll even start up quicker. Uh, in, uh, in the winter time you're dealing with uh, uh, a liquid gasoline or liquid diesel fuel and you have problems in starting. Uh, in cold weather, you don't freeze, uh, you don't freeze uh, gas, uh, gas atoms, mm -hmm. and uh, so by converting the water into instant energy, uh, gives us the ability to start the in engine very, very quickly. Well, can you start an engine in the morning, for instance? Uh, how long does it take uh, before you can drive away? Oh, it's it's uh, an instantaneous startup. Uh, immediately, when pulse voltage frequency hits the the water. Uh, it converts it to the gas, which now produces a thermal explosive energy. So it's an instant, it's an instant uh, type of start. Okay. The electronic uh, circuit interfacing gives us uh, the abilities to control and meter the amount of water that's going in on the start condition as, as opposed to on a run condition. So the computer automatically adjusts uh, between the start condition and the, uh, and the run condition. So electronically, we have the abilities to adjust for these parameters. And uh, the same as a conventional car, we also have the abilities to adjust for uh, different ambient uh, air uh, conditions uh, going from sea level up into the mountain ranges. So automatically the electronic uh, circuitry design gives us the abilities to adjust these parameters to give us a very smooth operational uh, performance. But uh, what about air pressure? I mean, when you go up high in, in the mountains, you don't use uh, ambient air. So this has no influence on the performance of the car? No. Uh, if you come over here, um, here we have a, a part of uh, a device is a metal bellows, which now allows uh, to control the amount of ambient air going into the engine uh, of the car. And this automatically allows us to regulate uh, the ambient air pressures going from sea level up into the mountain areas. So electronically, these... Uh, uh, solenoids you see here uh, are has sensors that automatically uh, senses the amount of ambient air pressures and they're automatically electronically adjusted to compensate it for a difference of air pressure. So this allows us now to give us tremendous good performance uh, going from sea level right on up into the into the high mountain uh, regions.